Hello YouTube, so this is an update video for the Enduro e-bike. Just a couple of modifications or, I don't know, maybe just improvements I did and, and a couple of uh, repairs I had to do. And I hope this helps you if you're in the process of building one of these bikes or maybe you're buying one of these bikes. Alright. Oh, hang on. Now see, I do... I do read your comments and I absolutely should be wearing gloves. And I never do and for safety reasons, you're right. Okay. Get these on real quick. All right. Now these are pretty old, though. I probably better get some new ones, but yeah, they'll work for now. All right. Okay, the first thing you're going to notice are the slots cut into the side covers, and that's to allow air to get to the controller to help keep it cool. I received a lot of comments about where I mounted that controller, which is it's going to overheat in there, it's going to heat up your battery, put it in the front where it's supposed to be, and originally when I built the bike, that's exactly where I was going to put it. I wanted it up front, and for that specific reason, you know, have it up in the air, um, keeping it cool, but it's not all blue skies and sunshine. You know, I ran into some problems, and the first one was the front cover didn't fit. I mean, you could Mickey Mouse some brackets and make it work, but I didn't want to do that. Or you could go ahead and just, you know, run no cover, kind of stealth bomber style. But then I'm looking at the wiring, and then I'm thinking the front wheel's going to be kicking up rocks and dirt onto the controller. Water's probably going to get into the contacts, and... I don't know, at the end of the day, I just felt it was a much cleaner build with it inside the frame. Although, you know, it did bother me because you got to figure the controller does generate some sort of heat and the battery generates some sort of heat and with it sealed up in there, eh. But a lot of, lot of builders do that and they don't run into any problems. And from what I understand, these controllers, they just don't get very hot. Now, I don't know because I've never tested it, and that's something I'm going to do at the end of this video. I'm going to go ahead and tape up those slots, get it nice and toasty, check the temperature, and then I'm going to pull the tape and, and run it and then check the temperature again, see if those slots are having an effect. you also notice that I wrapped my side covers in 3M matte black, and I figure that's going to give me at least another three or four miles an hour on the top end. <laughs> So I had a problem with my battery. I had a balance line drop and basically what that means is one of the balance wires lost connection and it shut the bike down. And that's one of the drawbacks of wiring your BMS to the discharge side of the battery as well as the charge side. When a problem like this happens, you will lose power. Now if it was wired to the charge side only, you know, then you would catch this problem when you went to go charge the battery and not, you know, when you're out there on the road. <laughs> So I'm not sure why this happened. I don't know if it was just a bad soldering job that I did or, you know, if, if it's from the battery kind of bouncing around in there at the last 700 miles. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I did not have the battery very secure. It, it was just on foam and very thin foam. And it, it, that's because of the clearance I have between the controller and the battery. It's just very difficult to try to get foam down in there. You know, a decent, decent size foam anyway. So what I did is I went ahead and installed some shorter standoffs. I believe they're quarter inch. And then I went with low profile bolts for the seat mount. That enabled me to tuck that controller up into the frame a little more, giving me more clearance between the battery and the controller. And now I was able to get some nice thick foam in there. And then RC car style, I went ahead and, and uh, bolted in a strap. Now, I don't have that strap very tight. I have it just enough to kind of pull the battery down into the foam. You can see how that works out. So far, so good. I did a little test ride and it's nice and quiet, seems solid. So I, I, think, I think it's gonna be fine. Okay, during my review video of this bike, and I'll put a link to that video in the description, but I mentioned that I had my rear shock adjusted too soft, uh, basically went off road, hammered it, jumped it. And I ended up bending the shock mount and then cracking the swing arm. And I just wanted to give an update on that. Basically, I straightened the shock mount out as best I could. And then I just had a bead welded across the crack. Now, I was going to try and reinforce this in some way. Maybe even replace that shock mount with longer or thicker ones. But then, you know how that goes when you make one area stronger, then the next weakest link fails. And I, I just think if I need to, if I want to ride the bike like that, I, I probably need to change the shock. Maybe, I don't know about just changing the, the spring itself. I'm thinking about maybe a longer one going from 190 millimeters to 210. Give me a little bit more travel and then upping the spring another 100 pounds to make it a little stiffer to try and handle it. But for now, I'm just going to take it easy and we'll, we'll see how it goes. 
Okay, moving over to the hub motor, and I just want to go over this one more time because I get a lot of comments about how I bolted that in with those washers and spacers, and, and rightly so. I mean, it was funky. I never liked it like that, but I had this problem, and that's this particular style of hub motor. It has this ridge, and if you put a washer on top of that ridge, the washer only contacts the pads of the ridge, and it just doesn't feel secure like that. And you want this area secure, you want this area strong, you don't want that spinning out in the swing arm because it'll tear the wires out for you and, and that, that's not fun to repair. So the only thing that fit nice on there was the torque arm. The ridge fit in the slot of the torque arm, kind of like a key going into a lock. But then that left me with another problem, and that's the fact that the dropout was too wide. And, and you know, that's kind of what caused all the funkiness in the first place. That's why I put the washers and spacers in there. But this time, you know, I just went ahead and left them out. I bolted it together. The swing arm flexed together about five inches, five, five inches, <laughs> five millimeters aside, and, and no problem. My chain lines up, my brakes line up. I got no, there's nothing rubbing it's just a cleaner build a cleaner look and I'm kind of glad I brought this up one more time just in case you guys any of you are having the same problem okay so let's go do some heat testing I got the slots taped up I'll uh, check it and then I'll pull the tape and do another run okay let's blast up this hill left of them <laughs> 93 ooh yeah that's 110 okay so I pulled the tape and let's see where we're at now blast back up this hill See what it's at right now. Ugh. Eighty-one degrees. All right, there you have it. A twenty-nine degree difference. I mean, I wasn't expecting that, especially on a day like today. It's only sixty-five degrees out. I mean, what's it like on a hot day? You know, 80, 90 degrees. But anyway, all right, that's a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, something you want to see, go ahead and put it in the comments and I'll see what I can do. And I hope to see you guys next video.